a lot of the times as an editor, we don't really have the option of choosing what media we are using for our edit. Now, if you're the person that's shooting the footage, obviously you do. Let's say we don't have the opportunity of having the highest of high-end systems. Well, depending on what media that we're bringing into DaVinci Resolve, if it's raw files, if it's uh, just really high resolution files, the data rates are gonna be very high and that could be a strain on hard drives, it could be a strain from upstream from there, dealing with the processor, the memory, or the graphics card. So is there a way that we could get a snappier, more responsive timeline and not have to deal with kind of like a chuggy timeline and you know a very unenjoyable experience when we're editing? And the way to do that is using proxy files. The cool thing with proxy files in a lot of the modern editors is that you can bring that proxy file in. It is a linked secondary source. So we have our primary source material and then we have this proxy that is also attached to that. What we're gonna be using to visually represent the source material is a lower, a lower quality, I guess the best way to put it, a lower quality video file. That lower quality video file is gonna be what DaVinci Resolve is going to be processing while we're editing. So we're going to be editing with this smaller file that might not have the uh, uh, quality that we want our end product to be, but it runs very fast on our system. And because it's linked to this source material, which is the stuff that came out of the camera or whatever we were given, when we go to the end, we have all of our edits on our timeline, all on all of this proxy stuff. When we hit deliver on the deliver page and we render it out, DaVinci Resolve is gonna go back and say, oh, this was linked to the source material that is really high resolution, looks great. We're gonna be using that to have all of these edits on. So we're using the proxies. They look like crap on our system while we're editing but we can at least see what we're editing, right? And it's fast and it's snappy and it's a very good uh, experience while we're editing. And we're not waiting for a computer to try to process something because a lot of the times we're working in a, small, in a small program monitor and we're not looking at the full resolution anyways. So we don't need to have that until the final render. So because they're linked, we'll still get the final render. It'll look great, but while we're editing, we're editing off of these lower grade video clips um, that will, our system will respond to a lot better. So it sounds a little complicated. It's not complicated at all. Um, there are a couple of steps that we can that we have to take to set this up. And by a couple of steps, it's like three clicks. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color preset tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. If you already knew about proxies, you can also use external programs to do all of your transcoding. Uh, you could use Handbrake, whatever it may be, or if you have some type of ingest system that you know is copying your cards and then also making proxy files for you, you have that as well. Um, you could use that. There are a couple of caveats to make sure of when you're doing that. The first one being that the file names have to be the same. The second one is that the uh, frame rate has to be the same. If those two are the same, you could bring them in and link them and it's pretty simple. Actually, let me show you how you would do that. So you already have all of your media already transcoded for the people that already know the proxy workflow. All you're gonna do is just bring in all of the uh, source material, all of the raw stuff, into your project and they're gonna highlight it all. You're gonna right click and you're just gonna go link proxy. It's gonna pop up a window, ask you, where is it, right? So you go to that folder that it's in and it'll link all the stuff that you had highlighted and all the stuff that's in that folder. So that's how you would do that. Um, for everyone else that doesn't, you know, have some type of ingest system or anything like that, and you wanna do it all through DaVinci Resolve, 
Um, I mean, you could use DaVinci Resolve's media page as an in ingest because it does have the clone tool and you can do your checksums and all that stuff. But let's go into how we would actually set this up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna set up our project, right? So we're gonna come over here down to the gear and we're gonna click into our little gear here. In here, we're gonna come into our master settings and then scroll all the way down until we get down to here for our proxy resolution and proxy format. So the big thing with uh, high resolution uh, media is that obviously the files are bigger, the data rate's bigger, right? If we can reduce that, then it's gonna be a less of a workload on our system fetching the file and then sending that to the memory and then through the processor and then through the graphics card and everything else, right? Because at the end of the day, we want this workload to be as low as possible. So when we start to add in all of our edits, all of our transitions, all of our effects, all that stuff, we have some extra processing power and it's not all being processed by these really high resolution video clips that we don't really need while we're editing. Deliver, different story, but while we're editing, we don't need all that. So you can bring this down as low as you want. For now, I'm just going to go to a quarter. So it doesn't matter whatever your resolution is, it'll just cut that by a factor of whatever you put in there. Next is format. If you're on Mac, Windows, and Linux, you're gonna have a different list here. This is where a lot of people get confused. You wanna come down to a codec that is lighter, right? So you have standard quality, high quality, and then low bit rate. So I'm gonna go for this one, I'm just gonna go for low. You're gonna to wanna to pick whatever your lower end is that is going to be most suitable for you, right? If you go too low and let's say you're on a really big monitor and it looks a little too bad, well then you wanna bump it up a little bit to something that is gonna look a bit better for you, right? You don't want it to be too small where you can't see the detail, but you also don't need to see every hair strand. We're trying to make our computer as snappy as possible in this process. So once we have that set up and by all means, we can always change these settings and, and remake the proxy media if we want to. Next, we're gonna scroll down a little bit further, and then we have the proxy generation location. This is typically going to be a spot that you're going to have a faster drive on, right? We're trying to lower this workload and get a snappy, as snappy as possible. So um, this location always has to be accessible by your DaVinci Resolve. It can't be a thumb drive that you pull out halfway through and edit. Obviously, it's not gonna work. Uh, but you want it to be something that is going to have enough storage space for all of your proxy files and it's going to be quick and you know so your you uh, your mileage may vary on, on your location there but typically i would say pick something in your system unless you have the infrastructure to do it on a, a on a network drive and the network drives are fast enough um, so yeah you can pick that location once you have that all picked we're then going to hit save and now we just kind of set up some settings. Now we have to pick all the media that we actually want to turn into a proxy file. So we can do this from any page, I believe, uh, but you're just going to highlight all of your media. Obviously for this project, I only brought in one piece. We're gonna right click, we're gonna highlight it all, right click, and then come up here to generate proxy media. Once we do that, it's going to, in the background, take that file. It's going to transcode it into whatever our settings were. And then it's going to link which is something that we're not really going to see here, but it's going to link that media. So now if I was to view this, it doesn't look bad, right? Now this is going to be 1080 on YouTube. So it, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the difference here, but we can turn this off and we can see a slight difference here, right? So we can turn this on and off and there's a slight difference here. Don't really know if you're gonna be able to notice the difference, but there is a slight difference. Uh, but we're all about the edit page speed. So we bring this on and it's just like any other clip that we were ever working on. Big thing to note is that in playback, you wanna have this selected. Use proxy media if available. If it's available, it will use it. And it'll be pulling that proxy media file and playback will be silky smooth. And like you can see, everything is kind of just soft, right? compared to if I come back, turn that on, and we can see it looks a little bit better. Actually, you know what? I can zoom in even more here, and we could see her hair here, versus if we have it on, we can see it looks a little crappier. But it doesn't matter, because we'd be editing it like this, you know what I mean? So, let's say you have some stuff set up as a proxy. Now you don't know if the 
couple of pieces of media that you're working with or proxies or not. Let's, let me show you how you do that. So you come up here, you right click in your, uh, it doesn't matter, any of these like little uh, columns up here. And we come down to proxy and we click on proxy. And then we can see right here, it's showing me that there is a proxy resolution. Let me actually grab another video clip and throw it in here. So when I bring in another video clip, this one doesn't have it. So it says none, right? So that one doesn't have a proxy file attached to it. I can bring it in. You would never notice the difference, but that one currently doesn't have a proxy file, but this one does, and it's showing the resolution. So before we were working with a 4.6K and now we're working with a slightly smaller, it's a very weird resolution, but I believe we had it set as a quarter. So yeah, so we have that uh, you know smaller resolution looking great. Now, there are a couple of things depending on how comfortable you are with Fusion and the color page because now we're gonna go over to those pages and because there's a couple of things that I wanna quickly gloss over or show you. So before we were saying that this resolution here is 1152 by 648, right? When we come over into Fusion, as you can see up here, it has that other uh, resolution, the previous resolution. But that doesn't mean that the media that it's currently pulling is the other resolution. It maintaining this resolution is very critical for when you're doing compositing work because you're going to be bringing in media in here and you want uh, pixel by pixel count in your locations to be accurate. But in the background, this is still the crappy quality video. So we're still pulling the crappy quality video but all the nodes in Fusion are going to be mapped to whatever the proper resolution is. So if we're doing any composite jobs, we don't have to be concerned with that. So that's something to keep in mind. If you ever want to see um, uh, 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 the correct pixels for the media, maybe you're doing some type of in-depth tracking and obviously this would be a crappy way to track. You could simply just come into here, uh, uncheck this, and it doesn't look like it right now, but once you move the playhead, it'll uh, clear up and it'll actually, the next frame that it pulls, it'll be pulling the uh, the actual uh, material from the native file. Uh, same way over on the color page, there's a couple of things here. Remember, I initially pulled a B-RAW file. And if you know anything about RAW files, we have the ability to come over into the RAW settings and change the settings over here. If I was to have the proxy set up, obviously we've seen some stuff move within our curves and whatnot but I could come into each clip and I could start changing this. And one thing that you'll notice is that our uh, shot, I can play this through, isn't changing. If you know what raw files are, this makes sense why this isn't working, but it's just something to be conscious of uh, if you do have a proxies. So anytime you come over to the color page, you wanna turn off the proxies, right? Because you're using a super compressed version of the, of the video itself. So. Uh, that's one thing that I, I just wanted to make clear and make sure that you know is that you can still obviously add all of this stuff in, uh, but the big thing to note is that uh, you want to just make sure that you switch that over whenever you're starting to do color stuff, because if you don't, you don't have access to everything and your color grade's not going to be as accurate as it should be. So once we're done, right, let's say we don't even do anything in color and we still have our, you know, blurry... Uh, 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 footage here, right? When we go over to the deliver page and we go to render out, this doesn't matter what setting is set. Doesn't matter what setting is set. When you deliver, it's going to use the source material because obviously that's what you would want it to use. Why would it use a proxy file when you want to have the highest quality of footage? That's just a big thing to, to, to yeah. To, to note there. So you don't have to be super concerned with, oh man, what are, what are the settings that I have to make sure that you hear so that I get, you know, the utmost quality. That's, that's not something that you have to be concerned. Unless you want the proxy file because you're trying to show off something, you can simply come down into the advanced settings and then use proxy media. It's something that you then have to check. It doesn't matter if this uh, uh, use if available. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. When we're delivering, it will always use the other media unless you check it to use the proxy media. And there's there's reasons on why you would do that. Quick turnaround, you wanna show a couple of frames off to someone, that sort of deal. Uh, but yeah, that, that's not something that you should be concerned with. So I think that kind of concludes everything on using proxy media that I can think of. 
I can't think of anything else. It is a just very good way to make a struggling system be a lot more snappier and uh, allow you to actually be creative instead of waiting for a computer to process whatever next graphic or effect that you're adding on. Um, but yeah, so that's how you would do that. And like I said, this is just making the workflow on your, or the workload on your computer when dealing with the high resolution media. Now you can do a bunch of things in Fusion that make your computer struggle. Don't get me wrong on that. But this is to make the media less of a workload on your system. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Just making your system uh, more responsive when playing back the media. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something today. Um, my name's JR. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one. Peace.